scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Herein is my Father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. When ye bear much fruit, you prove that I mentored you when you produce results. So shall you be my disciples. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men. He wants men to see it. Don't just keep silent. I'm not talking of some boastful, arrogant manifestation. But let me tell you something. Results have a way of compelling the attention of men to respect God and respect his process. You will hardly advocate anything sustainably until God garnishes upon your life a dimension of result that dumbfounds the wisdom of men. Man as a species is arrogant. It takes result to humble them to be meek enough to listen. It is true. It's a weakness in men. For as long as your life does not command a threshold level of sustainable results, it is going to be difficult to advocate spiritual realities, no matter how true it is. As a man of God, as a business person, as a career person, there is a dimension of God's investment upon your life that he seeks for the world to see. That way, they will pay attention. Come see a man who has told me, not a man who wasted my time. Nobody comes to see a man who wastes their time. Come see a man, one woman. When a madman was killed in Gadara, that one testimony was equivalent to the salvation of 10 cities. Let me tell you this, we do not have all the time for the global harvest. There is a dimension of light and power that must come through the church by the operation of faith that will humble the pride of kings and nobles and nations and bring them to a point where they will acknowledge like Nebuchadnezzar that there is a God in heaven. It was the dexterity of the result of Daniel alongside the three hebrew boys look how those guys shook the gods in babylon and brought down kings and their pride the reason why it is difficult for people to see the light and the power and the glory of god upon our lives is that while we advocate very boastfully our results show that we are still at the level of amateurism and infancy conferences like this was designed to step us up into levels of mastery where you can live you can open this door knowing that my life will truly change hallelujah The times that we live in are not times for loyalty over nothing. People will want to taste and see that the Lord is good. The goodness of God can be tasted. The reality of his power can be tasted. One supernatural manifestation of faith, I tell you sincerely, can shake nations and break their pride and cause them to see and to know that Jesus is Lord. You must understand the object behind this desire. It's not just some pursuit for self-aggrandizement. It's more than that. In as much as we benefit and the quality of our lives improve as we engage faith, the ultimate goal is to coordinate this faith force towards kingdom come. It's not just about houses and cars and prosperity alone. In as much as those things pass through us and we become benefactors of it, believe me, 
that this whole teaching ultimately is so that the global harvest nations in one day can come to the foot of the cross it will not happen by the strategy we are currently working in it's too slow there's too much argument about the potency of the faith life that we so propose we need a superior strategy and only faith becomes that victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes limitation in church growth the victory that overcomes circles of witchcraft and circles of demonic oppressions over families the victory that overcomes Kali para kosiata. the victory that overcomes powerlessness do you believe what I'm sharing with you I know that there are ministers of the gospel here respectfully speaking we are in times and seasons where without a superior dimension of the manifestation of faith one day we are going to have empty pews believe me because there is such a display of of the plots of satan over the church worldwide and satan is doing everything within his power paying to say jesus did not rise again and we must introduce jesus in a dimension that will make nations desire him it cannot just be by stories and lectures alone our lives must prove the reality of the risen christ are you in agreement with me so we are discussing faith gentlemen thank you the lord bless you so faith is the victory the bible says and then we also establish the fact that faith has to do with action not mere speaking i want to now teach a bit on the basis of our conviction because if you have faith in fear or you have faith in Satan it will not produce faith must be in Jesus Christ and his ability every day we have faith in something fear is having faith in the object that causes you the fear for instance are we together now we need to understand the dynamics of Bible faith Bible faith is based on two qualities of God there are two qualities of God that produce Bible faith in the believer. Number one, very quickly, is his integrity. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 49. Numbers 23 and verse 49. And verse 19, I meant to say. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Please read with me if you can see it. Ready? Read. God is not a man. Please stop there. Please stop there. Stop there and look up. Very, very instructive statement. You may have heard me say it again and again. God only became a man. He is not a man. If God is a man, he must worship who created him. Are we together now? God is not a man. God only became a man. You have to understand this. So God is not a man that he should lie. This is a very interesting information about men. That it is usual for men to lie. For various reasons. Number two. Neither the son of man that she should repent. That means draw back on his word. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good this ladies and gentlemen is the first quality of God that Bible faith is predicated on the integrity of God comes from the word integer sameness consistency unbendedness that God is dependable God is reliable based on a quality called integrity please shout to say integrity 
that means that before God speaks he will have to find out whether he will change his word tomorrow and if he's sure he will not change it then he will say it you can pick this Bible and find out the things that God has said concerning you and have absolute confidence that he meant everything he said for instance i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness for instance gentiles will come to your light they are kings to the brightness of your rising for instance i will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten this is the one who has integrity speaking for instance that the the where you have been deserted so that no man will pass through you that you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations i believe why because the one who spoke is not just god who is mighty he has integrity he has integrity the scripture we read earlier on he said and the Lord visited Sarah. Genesis 21. Please give it to us again. Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2. The Lord visited Sarah. As he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah. As he had spoken. This is called integrity. Verse 2. He says. And Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time which God had spoken integrity i will give you 10 naira by six o'clock and six o'clock there is an alert there integrity the quality of sameness the quality of unbendedness the quality of consistency men change they don't have to be evil is 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 a reality that is enshrined in men so the bible says hey don't get used to men and think god is one of them god is not a man someone prophesied to your spirit man say god is not a man that means that every word that has come from your man of god and his wife upon this altar as touching what god has said you will reserve a right to still keep it and say lord i still believe that this word will come to pass you told me this year will be a year of victory you told me this year will be a year of triumph you told me when men said there is a casting down for me it shall be that there is a lifting up you told me that i will not beg for bread i will see your faithfulness you are a god of integrity your boss may not be that way your relatives may not be that way but i have good news for you god is not a man man of god he told you that by the end of the year you will have your own church land Please find a way of shaking away on I trust a man if you think he plays you or he does not like God is not respectfully speaking he's not some politician who gives you some manifesto today and then changes no he is so obsessed with you knowing his integrity that he archived his track record in a book and says study go through dispensations i spoke to kings i spoke to nations i spoke to men in the presence of their enemies i spoke to men in the presence of their obstacles you're not a man no you're not a man no. you're the god who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man, no, you're not a man, no. you're the God of everything, no one like you.
listen to me. Let me bring a word of comfort to someone. I don't care what is before you now. If my father has told you something, it always does not look like it until it becomes it. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you. They say no one like you. No one like you, Father. No one like you, my son. You're the God of everything. I think it was the last time that I was here when um, the man of God took me around this massive facility and began to tell me the stories of the wonder working power of God. You are not sitting inside a building. You are sitting on a reality that was birthed through faith. As I traveled from Lagos coming down, I looked at all the buildings. I looked at all the structures and I said, my God, once upon a time, these places were not there. Somebody was in his room with God and God said, I would do something. And they said, Lord, I don't know what you are saying, but I believe you. You in the West here, you have an uncommon privilege because you have a rich heritage of men and women who showed you what faith can do. Ordinary men, some, many, uneducated, but God spoke to them and they said, if I perish, I perish. They stood by his word and today they have built things by the spirit that is all inspiring. They have commanded results that men cannot produce. Let me challenge someone here. God is not a man. If you cannot believe God for one million, that means you will never have a house in your life. If you cannot believe God for a house, it means you will never build anything serious for the kingdom. At any level, whether you need 50 naira or 1 billion, it's still faith that will bring it. Please listen to what I'm telling you. It is faith that will bring that anointing and that unction to your life. If God tells you, you will stand and speak to nations. Don't worry about who else is hearing. It's you he's talking to. Focus on him. I believe God. I've lost the ability to disbelieve him. I will die believing God. My life is a testimony. That when you take God seriously and you believe him, he will surprise you. First to yourself and then to everyone. Everybody say integrity. When God speaks to us, we must believe. This is one of the reasons why we have to spend time meditating. Let me tell you this. Please look up. Am I wasting your time? You see, one of the reasons why we study scripture is not just for theological enlightenment alone. We study scripture because we are immersing ourselves into a belief system. Are we together now? The scripture has its way of thinking. And when you soak yourself reading through stories, through parables, something begins to happen to the way you view life. You are immersing yourself into um, stories, principles that make you think like God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, let this mind be in you. You are not going to be open to scripture for 5-10 minutes and truly believe you will have the mind of Christ. No. How many of you have seen children who watch cartoons or read all kinds of things and while they are watching it, you think they are sleepy until later on they start repeating what you just had. Even though their eyes were closing, it was entering their minds. Let the word of Christ, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, that let it dwell in you richly and then in all wisdom. The word of Christ. The advocacy to be serious with the word of God is not just to make us feel Christians. It's not just to erode away the guilt of looking unspiritual. It's more than that. 
The Bible is the most concise manual that helps a man to be immersed into the mind of Christ. Here and there, there are good Christian books that are extracts from the word of God. But I tell you this, soak yourself in this scripture. Read and let it do something to your mind. Listen to it and you will marvel and wonder at the way your, your, your ability to view life and to analyze things now begins to look as though you were living in Bible times because you have immersed yourself. It is difficult to believe God if you only find scriptures that help to solve problems and stop there. Ask anyone who is in the academia. They tell you that one of the ways that they gain mastery and master their field and their art so much is by exposing themselves to all the materials that are around that body of knowledge. They are so immersed in it, it becomes part of their life. Are we blessed? Integrity. Let's talk about the next quality. Two qualities of God that our faith is built upon. One, his integrity. Number two, his ability. His ability. Mighty God. His ability. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. The ability of God. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for you to do. Look up, please. The Bible is saying here, Prophet Jeremiah is saying that this heaven and earth where all our problems and solutions, every solution we're looking for, we hope to bring it here within this domain that both the heaven and the earth was created by his great power. And on the strength of that, there is nothing too hard for him to do. Everybody say ability. Now listen, there are people who have integrity in our world, but they do not have ability. I promise you, that if only I get to this office and I see that things are all right, I will give you a job. The person has integrity, but he may find himself in a situation where he does not have the financial, the political, the sociological wherewithal to manifest his commitment. It takes more than integrity to perform. You must have ability. I want to pay your school fees. I really want to. But I do not have the money. God does not have integrity alone. God has ability. Now, this is good news. If the only thing God had was integrity, we'll, we'll still be in trouble. Because he will be apologizing till today. I'm sorry I promised your grandfather that I was going to lift you. I assure you I am still God. Just give me time. When I'm done with the devil, when the mountains, when creation finally sub submits to me, I assure you that you will not cry. That's as far as integrity can go. But my God has ability. Ability is the ability or might is the ability to make what you say happen. I can desire that the light in this great auditorium be off and promise you that in five minutes it will be off I may be well intentioned that's integrity but do I have the ability it takes the 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 the, the, the physical strength to ward off all the resistances and go to the switch and put it off please hear me it is because God has both integrity and ability that we can stand and speak over people's lives. It is because God has integrity and ability that you can sow a seed and actually believe that a harvest will come. His ability shows in agriculture. There is no year provided rain and the conditions are there. When you plant, his ability is still at work in the earth. 
after more than thousands of years the earth still obeys him the God of ability so when God says I will lift you don't look at his integrity alone look at his ability before God speaks he checks whether he has the power to make it happen Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4 we'll find somewhere to pray Second Peter chapter 1 we'll start from verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through knowledge the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord verse 3 says according as his the real giver in this kingdom is his divine power. Not just his intention. He wills it, but it takes power to give. His divine power hath given us all things. How many things? Please help me. How many things? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Let me give you an example of the things that pertain unto life. School fees. House. All of the needs that we have those are things that pertain to life the Bible says his divine power can give it the things that pertain unto godliness the richness of your fellowship your spiritual growth your sense of fulfillment your work with God whether it is a matter of life or godliness his divine power sustains the ability to cover all areas I want you to read scripture carefully and see how God mysteriously turned people around and turned lives around Moses why are you crying unto me I am not just a God of integrity integrity was when I spoke to you at the bush now you see ability stretch forth your rod on that red sea it does not just end with integrity I need you to see my ability and they sang the songs of Miriam I will sing unto the Lord, she said, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Even the horses together with his rider, only one who has power can turn a horse and the rider into a sea. Let me show you his ability in scripture. How about the rod that bordered with no roots? Let me show you his ability. A man who when three Hebrew boys were cast into fire, the Bible says they saw the fourth man looking like the son of God and it says these were men who the fire had no power over I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea I sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea if you know where egypt is you will respect god there is a reason why pharaoh respected god egypt was a place of wizardry do you know there are two people in the bible who ran away from their assignments or at least ask questions it was difficult for them one was Moses when God said I'm sending you to Pharaoh he said you are joking don't you don't try me I was to be the next Pharaoh I knew what I was studying before I ran away I won't go back to that place of wizardry with a rod in my hand you want me to die I saw these people manipulate the realms of the spirit they were the then superpower you would not come to it Pharaoh was not just a king Pharaoh was an embodiment of spirits. So Moses holds a rod and they look at his familiar face as he steps into Egypt and he stands before Ramesses, his half brother and says, brother, good to see you. It's just that this time around, I'm not an Egyptian. I've met one guy called the God of the Hebrews and I have come with a rod as a token from his presence to you. Thus saith the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. I could imagine Moses clapping his hand and saying, wonders will never end. 
the wilderness has 40 years of being at the backside of the mountain has done something to this man after his hard heartedness ah, the mighty one shook himself and said this night there is an angel that will pass over Egypt and that all the firstborns of the Egyptians do you know the covenant that the firstborns of Egyptians had they had something called the covenant of life they didn't die anyhow you go and study history you will know why God looked for the firstborns because the firstborn of an Egyptian was not an ordinary child are we together now they were dedicated to deities and they tied their lives to either trees or animals or other objects they didn't just die like that one firstborn could be a, it would be easier for all other children to die than one firstborn to die and God said I want to show you something since all your might is concentrated on your firstborns in one night I will pass Oh, that is the God you are still asking, will rent really come? That's the same God you are asking, will you really lift my child? That's the same God you are asking. When the firstborns were dead, the Bible says, Pharaoh did not just release them to go. He didn't even allow their dough rise. He gave them gold and he said go. When they left, he sat down in empty Egypt and said, what have I done? He said, pursue them. What a hard man. Haven't seen this kind of thing. You should mind your business and say, Lord, let me just be repenting while these people carry their trouble and go. Give me other slaves that will help me build Egypt. He said, no way, I'm going back. That's to tell you how stubborn Satan is. You need power. Oh. Just because he left you yesterday does not mean he will leave you forever. He left Jesus for a moment. Your Bible says. The next time he would come back, he didn't come to him directly. He came through Peter and then through Judas. Say unto God, Psalm 66 verse 3. How terrible art thou in your ways. It says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Hallelujah. The Bible says one time the city of Jericho was shut within and without. It said none came in and none came out. Let me speak to someone. I don't know what belongs to you that has been shot and nothing what sort of a place is that listen everything God created gives and receives what kind of a place is shot nothing goes out nothing comes in I stand by the God of heaven and I speak over someone in the name that is above all names everything shutting your blessings your lifting your lifting your rising I scatter that wall right now None came in. None went out. Let me tell you this. Jericho was an altar because they didn't carry anything there. They were not really interested in, in possessing the land. They crumbled it, picked a few things, picked Rahab and left. His power. Our Lord God. It takes power to get your property. There are still wicked men on earth. It doesn't just take power to get. It takes power to keep. But I know whom I have believed, the Bible says, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed unto him against that day. Please listen to what I'm saying because we are going to pray here. I'm praying that the spirit of faith will rest on someone. That you will get up and shake away all the things you've been giving excuses for. Hallelujah. There are some of you, God spoke to you since 2015. And said it's time to start your house project. <laughs> you know the way this thing is. You have to, wisdom is profitable to direct. We have to look at it. Let me tell you this. 
there is no time that will be convenient for anything is faith that creates the time and makes it convenient please hear what i'm telling you men of faith don't check the weather for anything even if the even if the storm and the boat is coming they don't stop moving they just verify whether jesus is still in the boat if he's there the journey is still safe I don't, I'm not teaching that we should be careless but let me tell you we live in a time with people who are full of fear it's why people don't rise they don't prosper they don't build anything I will do I will do for decades and they do not move there are people who have been in this city probably I'm challenging you respectfully speaking there are many young people here you are of age you are still in your parents house you will not move out why you have been careful you know there's no job the wait no one day you trust god for grace find one one room with your recharge card move out there and lie down in the mat and say father this is my bible this is you the signs follow they don't go before you if you don't move you will never see anything we live in a risk averse world full of an obsession for guarantees this is the victory the Spirit of God is speaking to someone. There are steps you should take in this season. Marking time and giving flimsy excuses will not produce the results. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us